I cannot wait till September first. Tired of picking Landry off. Don't want to. Don't want to lower his confidence. <laughs> I'm not sure if the Sooners, a former Tweeting Kings Twitter account, is active again or not, but the OU defensive back basically has the same feelings as us all. We are itching for that season opener, T-13 days until OU kicks it off on the road in El Paso, and the Cowboys open up against little old Savannah State. Good Sunday to you. You know, we all have our own way of expressing ourselves, either by actions or by words. In football, you, you need, do need a good mix of players who enjoy talking and delivering the smack talk, so to speak. So it's no secret who does that best down at Norman. I, and everybody knows the, the vocal leader, who, RJ, sitting over there. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because because I mean, the more trash I talk, the I feel like the better look I'm gonna get from them, you know. And if they don't give me a better look, I'm gonna just keep talking trash. So I'm just like, hey, y'all want to shut me up? Then why don't y'all block me? And then as soon as they block me, I'm like, all right, I gotta step it up. Absolutely nothing wrong with that approach at Camp Gundy. The Cowboys completed their final true scrimmage last night. Uh, it was the defense who walked off the field feeling pretty good about the spells, especially since the big O on scrimmage number one. But don't be fooled. The Cowboys, they take these intra-squad scrimmages seriously. It's like only bragging rights for the side of the ball who performs the best. Definitely, we just like to compete. You know, every time we come out here, we try to try to uh, try to improve and, and, and make each other better. Last scrimmage, they was talking. They was talking a lot of noise. So I mean, it was up to us to we, we compete. Every that's all we do here is compete and try to get better. I mean, I, who, who's gonna be the who has the best unit for the season? We feel like the offense is you know gonna gonna pull it out for us next weekend. <laughs> All right, Rashetti Jones. Well, he exhausted his eligibility as a Cowboy last season. The former defensive lineman is now focused on becoming a member of the media. And why not? During Big 12 Media Days in Dallas, I handed Rashetti the Channel of Champions microphone. And Rashetti told the story about how there were a couple of married guys on the team. And now there's only one. But my friend here, Lane Taylor, had to fill the void, and he's a married man now. So, Lane, tell us, how is married life treating you as an OSU football player? Hey, married life is good, you know. Uh, you're still in college, but you get to come home to a nice home-cooked meal. And, uh, you know, it's great. I love it. You know, one day I hope I can be like Lane and find the love of my life and, and live a great married life, but I'm proud of him. And uh, like I said, he's somebody had to fill the void of yep. the married yep. guys on the team, and Lane is a great candidate for a great guy. That was impressive. Now, this is fairly impressive as well. Do you remember this man? It's Mike Garrett, the Heisman Trophy winner from USC, Super Bowl champion, former athletics director at Southern Cal, and now AD at Langston University. Now, I asked Garrett, why Langston? What exactly happened at USC during that scandal involving Reggie Bush, and was perception reality? What happened at USC is it, it was an issue of you winning and dominating college football for a while, and then if you get a little hiccup, they make it uh, into more than that. And then if you compare it to other schools subsequently who had violations which were greater, there are lesser penalties. But that's, that's, I always think it's great to, be, to win and have to go through something like that. I'll take winning every time. Oddly enough, I found out Mr. Garrett and I are Edmund neighbors. Now, when you're as bad as the Astros are, 39 games below the level of mediocrity, changes are inevitable. The Astros cut loose their entire coaching staff, including their manager, Brad Mills. His replacement is Tody DeFrancisco, the now former OKC Redhawks manager. And DeFrancisco lost his debut as the Astros skipper against Arizona today. Now, down in the Texas Hill Country, the Redhawks beat a round rock. 5-2, to two, and they will play again tomorrow night in Round Rock. And over in Atlanta, history was made by a woman with OSU ties. And you also know Michelle Smith, a pioneer in a women's Olympic softball, two-time gold medalist. And How about that? Well, Former Cowgirl softball American pitcher Michelle Smith is the first female analyst for a nationally televised MLB game. She did so alongside Ernie Johnson and Braves legendary pitcher John Smoltz. All right, don't hate me. No clenches clips this week because there was so many things to put in this beautiful show. But Traber's takes are up next. And after that, the big show and where we will discuss James Harden's possible future in OKC may be limited after that four year extension of Air Congo's contract. Have a great night. <laughs>